here's my too long didn't read lesson for this entire section we're about to talk about now, which is don't drop columns. I want to drop a column and I did the drop column command. And when it was done, there were still entries in the unused tab calls view, the view that shows you what tables you have set to un or columns you have set to unused. Now that's a bit weird because in theory, the moment you do a drop column command after a set unused, everything's cleaned up. We wipe the table of that data and the data is gone. Let's take a table T copy of DBA procedures and move it, but compress it. And compressing is a good thing to do, especially in data warehousing environments where you want to actually have data that is compressed to make it faster to read, better index density, etc. Compressed blocks are often good in an environment where you're not doing heavy DML. So I take a table called T, it was 600 blocks, and now I compress it and it's dropped down to 141 blocks. So compression is a pretty cool thing. Now I'm going to pick a column and make that unused in my compress table. Works fine. Table's compressed. I can grab a column and say, yep, let's make that column unused. In my view, that's all you really have to do. Count for unused table columns is back to one again. We have one column that's unused. I can see it there in user tab calls. It's now the, what have I look at here? It's now the sixth column and that's the one that's been flagged as unused. Let's now try to drop unused columns and you'll get an error. You can't drop a column that's in a compressed table. This sort of makes sense because the compressed block is effectively about identifying duplicate values across multiple rows. Therefore, the only way if you ran drop columns command to actually go fish out the rows and columns in question would be to take that compressed block, uncompress it, have a look, remove the data and then recompress it. That seems a bit of a silly exercise to do. And that's why we block you from doing it. If you really want to, well, you can do that in the manual fashion. You can say, let's make that table uncompressed. That's a massive operation and makes the table huge. Let's now run drop unused columns. That's a massive operation that's going to walk through every single block in the table. And then you can compress it again. That's a massive operation that's going to walk through all the tables and burn lots of CPU. It's just not a smart thing to do comes back to my point, just set the columns to unused and then you're done. Don't worry about running drop columns. The only time you have to do other work is if you want to actually move the table to gain the space back. Let's drop that table. Let's now explore maybe some boundary cases. Here's a table where it's now partitioned. I've got two partitions, P1 and P2. I've populated it up. What I've got is I'm um, to make one of the partitions compressed. So modify partition P1 compress and then move it to actually reload the data compressed. This is a bit more of an interesting scenario because half my data is uncompressed, half it is compressed. What are the rules in terms of setting columns to unused and dropping them? I'll set another column to unused, object name, one column in user unused tab calls. And there it is, the second column now saying, yep, that's now gone. Here's the answer to this person's question. If I'm on 12.1, I just connected here to 12.1. If you do alter table drop unused columns, no error. It simply says, yep, we're good. We've done the work and it's very fast. And here's why. If you actually go look at your unused cold tabs, it's still there. In 12.1, we made a, a decision. I, I honestly do not know if this was a bug or an actual decision that if you tried to do drop unused columns on a table that contained compressed data, then it probably doesn't, you probably don't need to actually report an error. You've done all you need to do. We just simply let it proceed onwards. And that's what you get in 12.1, thus answering this question of how come I can do a drop column command and still have columns in the unused tab calls. We've reflected on that decision when you come to, I think 12 to onwards and hence 19 as well. If you try to do it, even if just part of the table, like a partition or subpartition is compressed, then we will simply block the entire activity. You'll see this now in all modern versions, but I wanted to put it out there because a lot of people are on 12.1. It's a, it's a long-term support release before you jump to 19. 
you may see this on your 12-1 version depending on what patch level are you are at because uh, for a while there you could try to drop unused columns and we'd say it's all good. Thank <laughs> you.